Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks Made From channel. This is Moshiks. And one of the things that I've been requested the most over the last two, three years has been how to write applications uh, with Rex and DB2. Rex is a very easy to learn language. DB2 is a great database on the mainframe, probably the best database on the, on the mainframe. And so it's only natural that people have been asking uh, to show some videos how to get this accomplished. Now, uh, over, the, over the last year or so, I've um, met a lot of new friends because of the Moshix mainframe channel and one of them was uh, this very nice very very smart developer called Sebastian Wendt he went and actually won the where is it uh, it's one of this here nope sorry um, ah, here it is so uh, Sebastian won the master the mainframe channel competition at IBM that's him here on the right side and he's a very gifted developer I've had already been at two or three conferences together with him is a good speaker as well and he writes great applications on the mainframe that exploit all the features of the mainframe so I think he is the promise of the of the future of the mainframe he he is the typical young developer that can bring the mainframe to the next level and can make sure that developers that the mainframe is going to be here for the next 34 years. So uh, Sebastian offered to make a video on how to write an application on Rex with DB2, and I think it's funny that he chose to write a, uh, a travel application because he knows I travel a lot. And so I'll I'll just hand it over to to Sebastian so he can explain to you what a kind of application he wrote. Over to you, Sebastian. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the Moshix channel. This is Sebastian. I'm here at TechU and here are many fans of the YouTube channel and we want to give something back. So we uh, did some coding in between the presentations and sessions and have fun with our videos. So we coded an app for, app for Moshix. Let's go to the data set. Mm. Because he's a very busy man and he's flying a lot, we created a aviation data display facility program. Uh, you can look up uh, avi aviation data that is stored in a DB2. And for example, we are in Berlin at the moment and I have to fly back to Munich. So let's see. So there are the flights from Berlin to Munich, and we also can calculate the distances over geo coordinates. And uh, that's for him to look up his flights on on a MBS system. So now the first step to create this app was to load the data inside ZOS. So um, I've downloaded the data from from Open Flight Data. So that's how it looks like. Um, actually, we don't save it. Um, it first looked like this and then you have to uh, get it in the right order. I used a, a Python script for it to use this and it will bring it in the right order so we can upload it to our mainframe after that. I've created some sequential files. Um, you see how this looks like um, and when we browse the file we will see all the data so this looks kind of cryptical but that all has some meaning so the first we will see this later when we create the db2 table now then you need those spoofy files uh, a PDS for the SQL scripts and a spoofy out file for the output of the SQL request. And now we will um, go into spoofy and do the first step. So the first step is to create a storage group, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can also do a system default storage group. The second one is to create the database. Um, the database here was called FlightDB and then we create our table space called root.js. So that's how the table space looks like. And there's the commit. So when we fire this up, uh, F3 and enter again. 
we will see that this worked out, SQL code null, zero, so it is successful. Now the second step will be to create the table, table R. So the table here, we have to know what the um, what columns we need. I've added the row ID column for the index later. Um, so the first section is about the airline, then there's the air airline ID and the airline source, and this is the length of the of the data in for that column. So now we also execute that one. So F3. Enter, and we will see this was also successful. Now we are ready for creating the index. So let's type an index. Um, so I cr I will create an index on uh, root two on row ID and send this. And we see this was also successful. Now, so now we have the database the um, table space, the table, an index, so everything looks fine. And we can go into our JCL PDS and there's a DB2 load job. So this is a sample job, you just, if you want to use uh, something like this, you just have to replace your libraries with your DB2 installation and then you can specify the load. So there's the data set, the sequential data set roots, where the data is in, and this is how we load it. So um, the row ID is getting created automatically if we add some rows. Um, so we start with the airline, it's at position 1, and when we look at the uh, sequential data set, browse, and okay, let's go and edit. And do some codes. You will see it starts at the first one. So that's where it starts and it has a length of 3 maximum at maximum 3. So the next one starts with 5 and goes up to 9. The third one is at 11 and so on. So that's the logic behind this. And we go back into our load job. We will see um, it's position 1 to 3, at the length of 3, so it looks fine, and this should work, we submit this, sub, so, now we submitted this, and we will see what's coming out of it, okay, uh, so it had one warning, but that shouldn't be a problem, we go into db2 uh, admin tool, and just see how it worked out, we are in the system catalog, Let's display the database. We know it was flight DB. Show the tables. Let's see. Tables and browse root 2. That was the thing I created, and there's the data. So this looks fine. And this is how we got the data into DB2 from our desktop. The CSV data, which was uh, originally in an Excel format. We Got it on the mainframe in the sequential data set and now into the DB2. So now we can work on uh, querying the DB2 from Rex, and this will be the next video. Thank you for watching and bye bye. Wow, Sebastian, this was quite amazing. I have to say, I'm very, very impressed how you managed to get the data off uh, the internet into DB2 so easily and then write a Rex application. I can't wait for the next installment where you show the actual Rex code. Uh, but very impressive. Uh, and just for the rest of you guys uh, watching this channel, Sebastian has actually his own Z9 uh, mainframe at home. Uh, so he, he owns a mainframe, an IBM Z9 mainframe, and uh, is a very gifted developer. Um, and he has a channel here also on uh, on uh, Twitter called uh, Sebastian underscore Wind. I, all su I suggest you all go and subscribe to Sebastian. Very gifted development. He, uh, I I'm quite sure Sebastian is going to be very visible for the next 34 years and uh, uh, very happy to meet him and a very gifted person so if you like this particular video by sebastian please press on the thumbs up button if you want to see uh, the the continuation of this video how the rex code looks like 
press press on the thumb on the subscribe button for this video so you can uh, get notifications of the when it becomes available and thank you for watching goodbye